Are you suggesting that someone's trying to make a real life sequel? Stab two? Who would want to do that? Sequels suck. Hey, no, no. Wow. Come on, man. So, after Scream was a huge hit, writer Kevin Williamson and director Wes Craven returned with Scream 2. One year later. Yeah, not much time to develop a sequel, but the first one was a big surprise, so surely this one was too, right? Well guys, this was perceived by critics to be a superior film to the first. It has the best reviews of any film in the series, and honestly, out of the four films in the Scream series, I honestly think that Scream 2 is the worst. Why? Because literally the entire film feels on repeat. From the characters to the story, much of Scream 2 feels incredibly phoned in. It's not a bad movie by any means, it still has some good stuff in it, and it works, but it's always just felt so underwhelming to me. Now I understand that most horror and slasher sequels are just watered down, less successful versions of their predecessors, but guys, they don't even take advantage of this half the time. Scream explored the flaws and cliches of a horror film while also being a cliched, flawed horror film in itself. Scream 2 is a flawed, cliched sequel for sure, but it doesn't do many creative things with that. Whereas Scream was in on the joke, Scream 2 feels left out of the loop entirely. It doesn't contain much of the humor or even many of the references that made Scream so enjoyable. Which is a shame, because it starts out pretty damn strong. The opening scene in the movie theater is very memorable and creative, and both Jada Pinkett and Omar Epps acted out very well. I even like the idea of the events of the first movie being made into a Hollywood movie called Stab, directed by Robert Rodriguez. That was fucking hilarious. Beyond that, the movie isn't terrible, it's just not that interesting. So, what's the story? A year after the Woodsboro murders, another killer is on the loose, targeting students at Sidney Prescott's college. So, joined again by Dewey, Gale, Randy, and a slew of cutout characters, Sidney must find out who this new killer is before it's too late. And when I say cutout characters, I don't mean cutout characters for the sake of a joke, like, you know, the first screen did. I mean, cut and paste to the 10th degree. Not that they're bad actors or anything, but there's really nothing interesting about them at all. You know the second they come on screen who is gonna die and who isn't. Well, with the exception of Randy, which didn't surprise me as much as it just pissed me off. Fuck you! Where's your innovation, huh? Why copycat two high school loser-ass dickheads? Stu was a pussy-ass wet rag. And Billy Loomis, Billy Loomis, what the fuck? Jesus, what a rat-looking, homo-repressed mama's boy. Son of a <laughs> I mean, they killed one of the most enjoyable parts of the last movie and this one about halfway through. Why would they do that? Now, I understand that many sequels kill off a main character from the previous one in the slasher genre. Friday the 13th Part 2 did this, Halloween 5 did this, Nightmare on Elm Streets 3 and 4 both did this. This is nothing new, and I guess it was a callback to that, but it always seemed more forced to me than anything else. Instead, we're basically just going through the motions and repeating a lot of the previous film instead of feeling like we're in a horror sequel. We already saw the Dewey and Gale relationship, which really doesn't develop much here at all. We already saw Sydney punch Gale. We already saw the boyfriend being accused of being the killer. They even try recreating the Drew Barrymore scene with Buffy the Vampire Slayer. My God! Why are we going through this same crap again? There were so many creative things you could have done with this, but it just feels like more of the same. Now, again, I have to reiterate, it's not a bad film. There are some things it does well that somewhat redeems the things that feel on autopilot. While the side characters are random cookie-cutter characters that are pretty much just there to die, the main characters from the last film are still very enjoyable, and the one thing it does story-wise that feels like it's advancing from the last film are the things done with Cotton Weary, played by Liev Schreiber. In the first film, we only saw a glimpse of this guy in a news report as the guy that Sydney wrongfully accused of being her mother's killer. What they 
do with him in Scream 2, I have to admit, was clever. They have him as a wrongful victim, seeking his 15 minutes of fame. He doesn't hate Sydney, but he obviously resents her, which is no surprise, and we see him harassing her quite a bit. He's a character who isn't really in the right, but you can definitely understand his frustrations when Sydney won't do a simple interview with him. Miss Prescott and I have a very complicated past. I didn't think that was a crime. No, but harassment is. Okay, then book me. <laughs> book me. Okay, look. <laughs> I don't know about harassment, but you've definitely got me for raising my voice in a public library. We're dealing with four murders here. Could I please remind everyone here that I'm an innocent man? <laughs> don't you watch TV, current edition? That was a very insightful program on which it was made abundantly clear that I'm an innocent man. So until you find me standing over a dead body with a knife in my hand, I think you better treat me with the rights and privileges accorded to every innocent citizen in this country. Not to mention, his part in the climax is actually pretty awesome. So yeah, I loved this character. Speaking of which, the climax and the reveal of the killer is something the film does a little better but also a little worse than the last one at the same time. I'm just gonna give a minor spoiler that there are two killers in this sequel. One of them was a nice clever callback to a well-celebrated 80s horror film, while the other killer's reveal was just incredibly lame. I mean, it was like they put all their effort into one of them and no effort into the other. Not to mention the motives of the secondary killer were weak beyond belief. When the character mentioned their motive, I, I laughed hysterically. It was so stupid. However, when you stop to think about it, even the main killer killer's identity doesn't make much sense. I won't spoil who it is, but it's someone who was in the movie the whole time and no one seemed to recognize for some reason. Yeah, it's a clever callback to that 80s horror movie, but it just doesn't add up the more you think about it. There are also moments of genuine tension in the film. Not so much in the moments for the side characters, but the ones involving the main cast are pretty good. If anything, I was happy to at least see these characters again because I did care about them. Overall, Scream 2 isn't a bad movie per se, it's just not a very engaging sequel. Some of that is understandable given the shoes it had to fill, but there was just so much more it could have done to make it better. That being said, the acting is fine, the kills are fine, the story is fine, and the ending is fine. Scream was a great film. Scream 2 is simply okay, and I'm giving it a B-. Scream 3, uh, well we'll cross that bridge next time. Do you wanna die tonight? Is that the best you can do? Why not set your goals higher, huh? You wanna be one of the big boys? Manson? Bundy? OJ? What's your favorite scary movie? Showgirls. Yeah.